MCP, A2A, NL Web. The world of building AI agents is full of new acronyms and terms. And who knows, by the end of this video, there might even be a new one released. But for this lesson of the AI Agents for Beginners course, we will focus on these three and take you from concept to code on how they work, why would you use them, and how to use them with your AI agents. This video comes with a written lesson including translations and code samples which you can find above and in the description of this video. You can also meet other learners and ask any questions you have about AI agents in our dedicated Discord channel at this link. So let's get started with our first agentic protocol, the Model Context Protocol, or MCP. If this is not your first time hearing about MCP, you probably have heard it explained as a universal adapter, like USB-C for LLM applications, which are called hosts in the MCP architecture, where we can have one type of connector called clients to sorts of tools and data, which are called servers. This is a great way to understand the benefits for users, but if you're building AI agents, which this course focuses on, you might be asking yourself, can I just use an API for this? That is a great question, especially since in this course, we also use APIs for tool calls. And while APIs are still being used when working with MCP servers, they have a unique benefits when working with AI agents. The first being tool discovery. This gives the ability for the agent to get a list of the capabilities of the server, which is important for the agent to know when to call it to help completing a user's task. The list is dynamic and can be changed when the server has any changes to its features. So you don't need to change endpoints in your code or look up documentation like you would with an API to enable the AI agent to understand how it works. The second is interoperability, which means you can change the LLM as you would like, which is very important when we're talking about evaluating and bringing agents into production because changing LLMs can bring better results. And lastly, standardized security, which allows for a standard way for authentication of our AI agents to connect to the service needed, which makes life as a developer of AI agents that much simpler. But now let's actually look at all of these concepts through some code. Okay, great. So now we're here at this Jupyter Notebook. Uh, this Jupyter Notebook is using Semantic Kernel and Azure AI Foundry for the LLM. And we're also connecting to a MCP server called OpenBNB. Uh, this is an MCP server that will actually expose information uh, from Airbnb, the popular booking website. I do want to note that this isn't the official Airbnb MCP server. At the time of recording, there isn't one. Uh, and also a good note that, you know, when we're passing information that might be sensitive, it's always good to look for the official MCP server. But as we're just searching uh, over Airbnb, I believe this is a good MCP server to get started on and aligns with our travel use case we've used for uh, throughout this entire course. So just to kind of highlight some uh, key points in here. Uh, so well, the first thing we're going to do, obviously, we're going to pull in all of our environment variables and we have a chapter for setup just to show you how to set all of those things up. But we'll start with the user input, which is actually what the user is actually going to request from our AI agent. And in this case, we want to find an Airbnb in Stockholm for two adults and one kid. So again, this is a very natural language way of searching. Um, so it's up to our AI agent to sort of map that to uh, the way that we can kind of search and uh, actually get this information from the OpenBNB MCP server. How we actually connect through semantic kernel as well as when we're building out AI agents versus uh, using an interface and adding an MCP server, is we're gonna use this uh, standard IO plugin. And essentially, I took this code from the GitHub repo of OpenBNB. Uh, most MCP servers will have this kind of copy and paste the code to establish the connection. Uh, but it gives us our search, uh, name, the description, which is, again, is going to be useful for understanding for the AI agent how to connect there. Uh, and then they bring some arguments, whether that is uh, authentication. And in this case, we're also doing things like ignore robots text because we're basically going through website. 
Uh, and then we're going to actually define this as an Airbnb plugin. So meaning this will be a tool uh, that the agent recognizes that it will be able to use uh, when looking for Airbnb accommodations. So this is kind of a semantic kernel way of defining tools. And then we're also going to load those tools in um, to uh, allow the agent to, again to know what's available out there. Uh, and we're going to do, do some printing of this just to make it clean. And we know that all other things are sort of working out there. The next important part is then obviously defining an agent. So this is where we've been defining agents like in other examples here. Uh, we call it the Airbnb agent. Uh, give it some instructions. We're actually going to give it some instructions on formatting as well. So just like a nice clean look. Because uh, again, we're going to get a lot of information from the MCP server and we want to show that to users. So it's kind of important uh, that they're able to interpret it or read it in some type of way. And then lastly, it's the plugin, right? The plugin that we define that connects to the MCP server, which is this Airbnb plugin. We do some things around handling responses and function calls, which is just, again, uh, good for kind of printing in here in this learning environment to show that, you know, anything that's going on, uh, as well as any errors or exceptions that you might be handling. And then lastly, we're going to put this out into our table so you can see it nicely. As we connect to this MCP server, right, uh, we're going to start the connection. Uh, the plugin is going to be created and connected. So it's good that, again, so we're starting that. We want to make sure that we're actually, the plugin is connected to the server. Uh, we know that these tools are looted, uh, loaded. And then we need to see the available functions. Again, this doesn't have to be exposed to the user at all, uh, but we're just doing this for uh, this course purposes. And this is the available function that we see. The agent is going to create it with the Azure OpenAI, so that was that semantic kernel code. And then it's going to take in the request, which is find Airbnb in Stockholm for two adults. Uh, and then the agent comes back again with some nice formatted HTML table of the property name. And again, Airbnb and property names aren't always that descriptive. Um, and the price for five nights, because um, again, that's something that maybe we kind of want to add later on. The re rating and review, again, that's where we pull in. And then the link. Uh, so these actually go into the directly into the actual Airbnb listings. If you don't believe me, go ahead, go to the code repo, run this code, click on the view the link, and it will take you to actual Airbnb links all through the M open MC Airbnb MCP server. So that was MCP and how you can actually apply that through code. So we just covered MCP and how it enables our AI agents to communicate to different tools. But what if we want to connect to other AI agents and even AI agents we haven't created ourselves. This is where the next protocol, the agent to agent or A2A protocol comes in. The first main component is the agent card. You can think of this like the tool discovery feature of MCP or like a business card for an AI agent. If people still use those anymore, I'm not sure. This card includes a general description of what the AI agent can do a list of specific skills and tasks so other agents understand why they would call it, and the endpoint URL to communicate with it, among other things. The next component is the agent executor. This allows for a remote agent to understand the task that needs to be completed, but providing the context of the user chat. And you can think of this like adding a new friend to a group chat and providing the chat history so that they can understand how they can start contributing. And the last component is the artifact. This is sent through the protocol by the remote agent and it contains both the result of the agent's work as well as the description of what was done before closing the connection. Let's look at this in action with a code example. All right, so now we're here at the Jupyter Notebook that uses semantic kernel with the agent to agent protocol A2A as well as Azure OpenAI. Uh, this again code example is available at the link above as well as in the description so you can look at all of it and run it yourself but i want to point out some key things around the a2a protocol and really understand how the concepts that we just explained how they actually play out in code so in this example we actually have three uh, different agents one is a currency exchange agent that allows us to get real-time exchange rates the second is an activity planner agent which what that does is give us travel recommendations based on the location. And then the third is a travel manager agent. This is actually using semantic kernel to orchestrate between those two agents. So when we get a user request that requires both of those agents or just one, uh, this travel manager agent is able to do that and able to do that through the A2A protocol. So some important parts around the A2A protocol in this example. 
Uh, you know, we're using plugins like we've done in uh, prior lessons uh, in terms of using Semantic Kernel as a tool. And we're making an API call here through this Frankfurter API. But one of the key things is around this Semantic Kernel Travel Agent Executor. This is allowing us uh, to basically enroll uh, our agents in uh, this executor because this is where we'll be able to uh, be able to see where the tasks have been completed, share what has been completed, and pass that along to the different agents. Uh, so you'll see the different agents that are defined, currency exchange, activity planner, and travel manager agent here. And then uh, we also then use uh, these utils and types uh, to pass out the, the different uh, current task. Also how A2A manages this through an event queue. So each agent knows uh, you know, what is going on or can look at it, what's the, the progress in, in play. Then uh, we're also going to create individual uh, A2A agents. So these also inherit from this class agent executor. So each of these agents much similar to what we've done in past lessons. Uh, but again, now these are A2A agents. Um, or also going there where we look at the different currencies that have been um, the different plugins that are available um, and things like that. And then lastly, I think the most important one is around this agent uh, card. So this is what I mentioned around the agent business cards. This is where you'll see the name of the agent, the description in general, as well as the specific skills of each agent. And what's really nice is the uh, examples that you can provide. So it gets a real clear picture, especially for the orchestrator agent, what this agent is uh, capable of doing. Then we make a sort of helper function and we're going to actually start all of these servers uh, here on our local machine. So each one has their own sort of port. And this is gonna be the best way to sort of mimic that these are operating in different environments. Uh, so you should see uh, once you run this code, uh, basically different three different servers running, uh, different ports at least on your local machine. And this, is, this cell is also a really great place to see the communication between the agents and what's actually running from a troubleshoot perspective as well. If I scroll down from all of these logs, uh, and we will see that we've created this A2A client. And this is again, kind of where we're making the connection or being able to interact with our A2A agents. And then we will also do some testing of the individual agents just to make sure they're working along themselves before we actually go into uh, the, the last block a last cell here, which is uh, using the, the uh, travel manager orchestrator. So this is going to uh, look at this uh, request, um, which is taking a, basically a user asking around a, playing a trip to Tokyo, that they have 100 USD to exchange, and they want to know what activities they recommend uh, while in Tokyo. So this is actually a multi-step task, and it requires multiple agents through using the A2A protocol. In this case, you will see that the task ID was created, uh, which is here. Uh, and then you will be able to see uh, that now that when we see the user, that the trouble manager response actually is taking from, uh, you know, basically inputs from each of these agents, the currency exchange rate, which is responded to, as well as a Tokyo two-day uh, recommendation. So that was the A2A protocol using Semantic Kernel and Azure OpenAI through code. The last protocol we're covering is Natural Language Web or NL Web. This protocol unlocks the information and content of websites by creating a natural language interface to interact with. This goes beyond just a standard search feature of a website because now users or AI agents can interact with the content of a site through chat. This is done through three main concepts. First, through our old friend, which we talked about earlier, MCP. Through NL Web, a website is also an MCP server, and you can use tools like an ask method to provide information to an AI agent. If you have ever implemented RAG before, you'll be familiar with the other two components. The first is embedding models, which takes the website content and converts them to vectors, which are numerical representations of the content. And we do this because it's easier to find similarities between the content and question. And the last one is a vector database, which stores those vectors, which is where the answers are retrieved. Being a protocol, NLWeb works with multiple different vector storage solutions like Azure AI Search and Elasticsearch. The protocol itself sets up the rules and formatting so responses are sent back in JSON format. This also makes it great for our AI agents to read this information. 
And in the written lesson, we have a link to the main repo so you can get a hands-on experience with NLWeb as well as how it fits with our travel use case. But this ends our trip around the world of agentic protocols. If you have any questions and want to meet other learners and attend workshops, join our dedicated Discord channel here and see you there and in the next lesson of AI Agents for Beginners.